The Prime Minister has publicly backed his most senior and influential adviser, Dominic Cummings, in the face of calls for his sacking after it emerged he'd driven more than 250 miles from his home in London to County Durham when the government had introduced its coronavirus lockdown. It happened during the period Mr Cummings' wife had contracted the virus. Some Conservative backbenchers have accused him of arrogance, while Labour has called for Mr Cummings to resign. However, Boris Johnson says his adviser had acted responsibly, legally and with integrity. Now, it comes as 118 more deaths were announced in the past 24 hours. That's the lowest figure since the lockdown began, though there's usually a lag in recording deaths at the weekend. And that brings the total number of people who've died in the UK to 36,793. With more, here's our political correspondent, Ian Watson. Why did you not stay in your primary residence, Mr Cummings, as the government guidelines state? Why did you go 260 miles across the country? Dominic Cummings' family travelled 250 miles away from his London home to isolate in Durham when his wife already had coronavirus symptoms, citing concerns over childcare. Though he faced something of a scrum here, the BBC maintained social distancing. But the Prime Minister held him close and faced down calls for him to go. Mind your fingers. I think he followed the instincts of every father and every parent. And I do not mark him down for that. I believe that in every respect he has acted responsibly and legally and with integrity. Conservative MPs have got in touch with us uh, today, Prime Minister, because they say lots of their constituents are angry. They feel that allowing somebody who was already ill to travel 250 miles across the country breaches at least the spirit of your guidance. Hand on heart, can you really say that this didn't breach the spirit of your guidance? What I can uh, tell you is that uh, I think when you look at the guidance, when you look at the particular childcare needs that uh, Mr Cummings faced at the time, it was reasonable of him uh, to self-isolate, as he did for 14 days or, or more, uh, with his family, uh, where he did. Some Conservative MPs are saying, Prime Minister, that this defence, that Dominic Cummings behaved responsibly, many of their constituents are angry about that because it makes yes, them well, feel as though they were say, irresponsible yes. in not breaching the guidelines and going somewhere close, no, no, perhaps, no, to their I, family I think, during think, this lockdown, think, and they feel insulted by that. Because I can totally get uh, why people uh, might feel uh, so confused and, uh, as you say, uh, so offended by the idea that it was one thing for, uh, for people here and another thing for, for, for others. But uh, really, having looked at what, uh, what happened, having looked at uh, his intentions and what he was trying to do uh, for the good of his, uh, his family, uh, I really think most people uh, will understand what he was doing. The UK was placed into lockdown with strict limitations on travel on March the 23rd. The last time that Dominic Cummings was seen before developing Covid symptoms was in Downing Street on the 27th of March. Durham police were made aware of reports that an individual had travelled from London to Durham on the 31st of March. And the following day, a police officer spoke to Mr Cummings' father at his father's request. Dominic Cummings then returned to work in London on April the 14th. Government ministers say Dominic Cummings and his immediate family were hunkered down at a property adjacent to his parents' home in Durham. But the Mirror and Observer newspapers and the BBC have spoken to a member of the public who claims he saw Mr Cummings in the town of Barnard Castle, 30 miles away, on Easter Sunday, when the message was stay at home. He has now formally complained to the police. I am content that at all times throughout uh, his period in isolation, actually on, on both sides, uh, of that period. Uh, he behaved responsibly and correctly. I'm told some government ministers are hugely frustrated that coherent messages on controlling the virus have been made more confusing to keep Dominic Cummings at number 10. So, do voters in County Durham have clear views? I think when someone like him, who's obviously giving advice to the Prime Minister, doesn't adhere to the rules, it makes it even more confusing for the average person. Other people have been in the same situation and they've managed, so why shouldn't he manage? We're all trying to keep in, right? Ten weeks of hours in. And he's out, he's floating the rules. Uh, it's all wrong. They should sack him. And the Labour leader seems to share those views. This was a huge test of the Prime Minister and he's just failed that test. He hasn't sacked Dominic Cummings, he hasn't called for an investigation. 
and he's treating the British public with contempt. If I were Prime Minister, I'd have sacked Cummings. Why are you guys not social distancing? How many Dominic Cummings seems secure in his job for now, but many MPs are worried that faith in the government's guidelines is far more shaky. Ian Watson, BBC News. Well, Laura Koonsberg, our political editor, is at Westminster. Laura, how much of a political gamble is this for Boris Johnson sticking by Mr Cummings? Well, it is a risk, no question about that. And normally it's advisers who sort of chuck themselves in front of politicians to soak up the damage. Today we saw the Prime Minister really sort of chuck himself out there to defend his key aide. And those close to him say that's partly because he was convinced by what Mr Cummings explained to him about the reasons for his behaviour. But more importantly, I think it's because Boris Johnson has come to really, really rely on Dominic Cummings. He's absolutely at the centre of the operation in Downing Street. And around here, he's either seen as admirably ruthless or by many, many of his enemies as relentlessly and somehow foolishly antagonistic. But for the Prime Minister, whether back in the Brexit referendum or during the general election and now his time in office, he's absolutely core to what happens in Downing Street and therefore he has made the decision, the calculation, that the loss of losing him would be greater than the political damage of trying to keep him. But of course that means that the Prime Minister himself has very personally today doubled down on what many people see as a double standard. And what has the general reaction been? Well, pretty negative in terms of that group of Tory MPs who've been out there publicly, some before the press conference, some after the press conference, joining the chorus of criticism of Mr Cummings. Some of the government scientists who've been involved in advising ministers on the strategy have gone on the record online to say they're worried that this undermines the advice that they've been putting together. And among government ministers, there's absolute frustration among some of them, some of them privately furious, but not at the Stage willing to go public, some of them concerned that they will end up getting a kicking for the clarity of the message being confused by what happened when one of the Prime Minister's close team was doing this, when tens of millions of people were told day after day after day to stay at home. And tomorrow, the Daily Mail, normally a newspaper that's been firmly behind the Conservatives, splashing, questioning what planet Mr Cummings and Mr Johnson are on and calling for him to sack his key aide if he's not willing to resign. That said, and it is important to remember this, politics moves very, very fast, and there have been many occasions in the past when Boris Johnson has brazened out a very difficult political situation. But this isn't a standard political crisis, because it's happening at a time of a national crisis that has already been going on for many months now, and many people are angry and upset. Mm. OK, Laura, thank you. Laura Koonsberg there at Westminster.